Namaste and welcome everyone here to Shinati Jyotish. Today I have a very exciting topic to share with all you, all of you on evolved versus unevolved planets, mature versus immature planets. And this is very important because I recently started a new series on Instagram where I go through all of the planets in the various houses and you can find my Instagram link at the description part of the video where we discuss whether your planet's position in that house is mature or immature, whether it's evolved or unevolved. And so I wanted to give a little bit of explanation in a video about what does it really mean to have an evolved planet? What does it really mean to have an unevolved planet? Just because your planet is debilitated doesn't mean it's not evolved. Just because your planet's in a difficult nakshatra doesn't mean it's not evolved. So I'll be going through the various factors in this uh, presentation to discuss how do we really determine the evolution of a planet within a person's life. So here we have the presentation of determining a planet's maturity in the birth chart. I think this is so important because no matter what time of life that we're living in, we know that the universe or God or whatever you wanted to call it, these planets were created to help us grow and evolve to reach our maximum potential. And so determining your maturity with the planet and wanting to improve your maturity with the planet is at the essential core of what spiritual growth really is all about. Now, for those of us who are mathematically minded, I thought it would be beneficial to develop a point system for the credentials of an evolved planet. Now, of course, as we go through the different examples, I won't be using this point system, but for all of you at home who are saying, do I have an evolved planet? Do I have an unevolved planet? These are the different credentials you must take, take into its effect. Now, the first factor in a planet's evolution that we look at is its planetary dignity relative to its sign position. Is it exalted? Is it debilitated? Is it an enemy sign? Is it in friend sign? Is it neutral? Is it great friend sign? Is it great enemy sign? Is it Mula Tricona? And so when a planet is exalted, it's getting this maximum 20 points of planetary uh, planetary points for its evolution as far as of a planet. Now, when a planet's in its root position, that might go down to 15 points, natural sign 10 points, friend sign eight, seven points. And as you get into neutral and enemy signs, it starts to lose points as far as its potential will be evolved as far as planetary dignity is concerned. Now, the nakshatra position is also extremely important. Um, whether a planet is in its own friend or enemy nakshatra. So if a planet is in its own nakshatra, that's the maximum credential for an evolution with that planet. And so it's highly evolved when we have planets in their own nakshatra, regardless of the sign that they're positioned in. So we can have a planet that is hurting our evolution from a sign perspective, but helping our evolution from a nakshatra perspective, which is very interesting. Now, the third criteria is the house position and the relative power and comfortability that the planet experiences in that house. For example, the sun loves the first house, Jupiter loves the ninth house, Mercury loves the third house. So these are the moon loves the fourth house. So these are different examples where a planet may gain its maximum poise just from its house position, therefore helping its evolution or maturity. Now the dasha is very important. It kind of shows that our maturity or evolution with the planet is never really complete till that time period in this lifetime is over for us. So if you're in Jupiter Dasha, you have the potential to evolve your planetary relationship with Jupiter 
during its dasha 20 points, getting you closer to the ultimate maturity or evolution with that planet. Same with Saturn Mahadasha, Rahu Mahadasha. This is our opportunity for us to evolve and mature with that planet based on our ability to listen to the lessons that that planet has to give us. Now, there are also some miscellaneous factors which are worth mentioning, um, but before that, we have to discuss uh, conjunctions and aspects. You know, uh, are these aspects on these planets which might be evolved or unevolved, favorable or unfavorable? Is Mars aspecting Saturn? Because that's going to hurt the uh, evolution of both of those planets. Is Rahu aspecting the sun or the moon? That's going to have, have a heavy de-evolutionary energy on both of those planets. So we have to keep this into consideration. And then there's some miscellaneous factors which have acquired, which I also believe contribute to the uh, evolution or maturity of a planet. And this includes whether we're married because we know once we're married, we inherit 50% of our partner's karma. So we have to consider that as a heavy factor. A retrograde position of a planet is also an important factor. The lunar and solar eclipses are an important factor. And even um, the integrative science of astrocartography, which I like to use. Geographically, are you in the right place or the wrong place? That can certainly play a factor as well. So now I'd just like to go through a couple examples and uh, point out in each of these examples one planet which seems to be very evolved and another planet which seems to be struggling in its evolution, which means we have this potential to mature and evolve in our relationship with that planet. Now, here we see my chart. And what better planet to start with with Rahu? Now, from a planetary Rahu perspective, Rahu is not exalted, but in its own sign. Okay? So instead of getting 20 points, hypothetically, from it being exalted, I would get closer to 10 points. So let's say that I get 10 points from my Rahu being in its natural sign. Then... Rahu is also in Sata Bishak Nakshatra, which is ruled by Rahu. So I get the full maturity points of Rahu being in its own Nakshatra. So I'm up to 30 points right now for my maturity or evolution with Rahu Graha. The third factor is its house position. Rahu is very strong in the ascendant. It activates the Kundalini axis. It's one of its best positions in the chart. I like the third house. I like the sixth house. I like the 11th house also for Rahu. I'm not sure it's the best house for Rahu, but it's one of the best houses for Rahu because you are here to complete your Dharma and fulfill your karma. So I would give about 15 points to that. So we have 10 points from the first credential, 30 points from the second credential, and uh 15 points from the third credential. So we have 45 points on my evolution with Rahu. Now, the fourth factor is to determine whether the native has gone through the Mahadasha of the planet. I have not. Uh, I was actually, if you look at my chart, um, I have not gone through the Rahu Dasha in this lifetime. So even though I'm a Rahu ascendant, I don't get a chance to really in an extreme way, evolve my relationship with Rahu. It's kind of a lifelong evolution. So instead of getting the 20 points, Rahu as ascendant is helping that, but I would still only get five points because I've only experienced Rahu subdashas. I've never experienced Rahu dashas. So that brings us to about 50 points as we go into the fifth factor. Are there any detrimental or beneficial conjunctions or aspects? Now, my Jupiter aspects my Rahu. This is an extremely beneficial aspect. Uh, this aspect of Jupiter on my Rahu kind of adds that 15, 20 points there. So we got 65, 70 points around the evolutionary status of Rahu, just using that mathematical method. And then when you take the um, miscellaneous factors, 
I am married to a partner who's very compatible for me. Um, I only have one retrograde position in my chart and um, Rahu is always retrograde. So we're not worrying about that when we're counseling the uh, maturity of a Rahu. And astrocartography wise, I haven't really traveled too much to my Rahu lines, but I am attracted to those areas. Um, but I am very devoted to my spiritual evolution. I, I do want to grow. I do want to evolve. I do want to get the best person I can be. So uh, all in all, I get about an 80% on my Rahu, which um, sounds really not that great as far as my maturity or my evolution with my Rahu, but 80% is still pretty good when we're talking about our karmic and spiritual relationship with these planets. Um, another planet which I wanted to look at in this chart, um, which is not so favorable, is uh, going to be my moon. Uh, at the first factor, we look at the moon's dignity in the sign of Libra. So we see that it's not that comfortable in the sign of Libra. So, um, and Venus is there dominating. So it would lose a lot of strength here as far as its dignity is concerned. And we could only give it maybe five, 10 out of the 20 points, but closer to the five because of the planetary war influenced by Venus. So I'm only gonna give my moon five points by the first credential. And the second credential, the nakshatra position of my moon is Vishika nakshatra. And Vishika nakshatra is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is not a friend. Jupiter is not an enemy. Jupiter is the neutral relationship with the moon. Even though some discuss that being an enemy, I like to think of it as a neutral relationship. Uh, but I wouldn't give myself more than 10 points along these lines anyway. So I'm only up to 15 points my uh, uh, maturity with the moon. Then we look at the third factor at the house position. Luckily, the moon is in my ninth house. The ninth house is the house of spiritual devotion. The moon is the planet of devotion. So this is a very good position in the ninth house. So I do believe I get the majority of the planets from the ninth house position of the moon. So I'm gonna give myself the 20 points here of uh, the house position of the moon in the ninth house. So, so far we're up to about 45 points. Now the fourth factor is the Mahadasha. And when I look at my dasha periods, I have not gone through my moon dasha yet. So I get no, uh, I've gone through sub dasha of the moon, but I don't get more than 10 points, closer to five points. So we're only looking at about a 50% 50 50 score as far as my maturity with the moon is concerned. Hopefully we gain some more as we go into these other factors. Uh, now the fifth factor is determine any beneficial or detrimental conjunctions or aspects. And unfortunately, the moon, even though these both these planets are feminine, they don't always get along with each other. And they're so close that it could be considered a planetary war by some astrologers. And so I can't get more than 10 points from this conjunction here. So we're looking at a 60. And then when we look at the other things, I am married. My Venus is not retrograde. Uh, it is not involved in eclipses. And I am very devoted to my spiritual evolution. Uh, so I would give myself another uh, maybe five points there uh, as far as my relationship with the moon. So as you can see, I got an 80 with Rahu and a 65 with moon. Now, if you were in school, I would be getting a D for my relationship with the moon and a B minus with my relationship with Rahu. So as you can see, the maturity and evolution can be kind of calculated in this sense. Next, I have my beautiful and lovely lifelong and devoted soulmate, Rachel, known as Agradevi in Sanskrit. And we're gonna take a look at a couple of her planets and discuss the maturity and the evolution of them. 
Um, as far as an evolved planet, I wanted to talk about Saturn. Now, the first factor in this planet's evolution is we look at its planetary dignity, and it's in its root position of uh, Aquarius in three degrees. So that would give it 15 points right off the bat. Then the second factor of the planetary evolution is the nakshatra of Saturn. Saturn is in Mula nakshatra, which is a K2 nakshatra, and Saturn and K2 are friends. So it's not that really going to be detrimental to her chart. Out of the, out of the 20 points nakshatras offered here, she would at least be getting 10 of them. Uh, so we're looking at uh, 30, uh, 25 points so far. Then as we move into the house position, the Saturn in the fifth house is a very strong house position. It indicates great potential for children, great potential for education, great potential for the learning of spiritual techniques. And I like the fifth house position of Saturn, especially when it's in its root position. Um, so I would be giving at least 15 or 20 points to this. So um, let's, let's, go with, uh, let's go with the 15 points here because it's not its signification house. So we're up to 15, um, 25 and 45 as we go into the fourth factor. Uh, the fourth factor is the Mahadasha. Um, let me pull up Rachel's chart quickly. I should have had it already pulled up with the dashes, but it should only take a quick second. So as I take a look at Rachel's dashes, she goes through her Saturn Mahadasha in 2044, but she has gone through many Saturn Mahadashas but you would not get a lot of benefit from the Saturn Mahadasha because she has not completed her Saturn Mahadasha or her Saturn return yet. So there's still a lot of evolution with Saturn yet to go, um, showing that the point total will increase once her Saturn return and her Saturn Dasha is complete. But out of the uh, 20 points here, we're only gonna be able to give about five or 10. So um, I believe we're at about 50 points in our evolution with Saturn. Now, when you look at conjunctions or transits or um, aspects of her Saturn, there's nothing. So she gets the full 10 points there. Um, so we got 20 points here in the first position, in the first uh, credential. We have 10 points in the second credential. We have 15 points in the third credential, that's 45. We have 10 points in the fourth credential, that's 55. And we have 10 points in the sixth credential, which is 65. And then she's married. Her Saturn is not retrograde. It's not involved in eclipses. And she is devoted to her spiritual path, so she does get the full points there. So she's got a 75. Now. When we're talking about Saturn, 75 is a very good grade. Now, when we look at a planet with a little less uh, evolutionary energy in uh, Rachel's chart, um, we can do a few, there's, we can focus on um, Rahu. So from Rahu's perspective, um, Rahu is in its debilitation sign, which means it loses all of its planetary dignity. So she gets zero points from her Rahu being in Scorpio. Then the second planet is the Nakshatra position. Her Rahu is in Anuradha Nakshatra, which is um, a friend of Saturn. So she would get um, 10 out of 20 points from that. The third factor is the house. The Rahu in the second house does worry, tends to do very well, um, um, but it's not its best position, so we'll give it 15 points. So she's up to 30 points now. Uh, the fourth factor is the Mahadasha. She, she is currently in her Rahu Mahadasha. She gets 15 points from that, so she's up to 45 points. 
And um, the fifth factor, is there any difficult aspects on her Rahu? And of course, K2 is aspecting her Rahu, and it always gets a difficult aspect from that. So we can only take a maximum of five points from that. So we have a 50% total on her evolutionary nature with Rahu or her maturity of her Rahu. She is married. Rahu is permanently retrograde, so we don't consider that. However, Rahu is involved in eclipses, so we do lose some points there. Um, but she is on a spiritual path as well. So instead of getting the full 70 points, it'd be closer to 66, 68, uh, about a D plus in her relationship with Rahu. So again, we see this calculation of our mature, immature, evolved, and immature relationship with the various planets. The next example I wanted to look at was Steve Jobs. This is a very interesting uh, chart to look at from an evolutionary perspective using Vedic astrology. The planet that I would like to focus on for his evolution is Saturn. Now Saturn is exalted. That means it's automatically gained its 20 points by the first factor of contribution. Then Saturn is in Saturn is in Vishaka Nakshatra, which is a Jupiter-ruled Nakshatra, which means neutral. So he gets half the points there. So we're up to 30 points on um, Steve Jobs' evolution with Saturn. House position, third house Saturn is great. One of the best, 15 points, 45 points there. Fourth factor, Saturn Mahadasha. He went, he was born in the Saturn Mahadasha, so you get full points there. We get 65 points so far. This is a very high score from, uh, from Steve Jobs and his relationship with Saturn, being that he already went through Mahadasha at the time of his birth. And then any detrimental aspects or conjunctions? Yes. Saturn in the third house is aspecting Mars in the ninth house. Mars in the ninth house is aspecting Saturn in the second house. So he's not going to get the full points there. Instead of 10 points, we're only going to be able to give him five. So he's up to 70 points in his evolution with Saturn, which we discussed is already pretty good. He was married. His Saturn is not retrograde. It's not involved in eclipses. And he was on a spiritual path, definitely towards his later life. So again, his Saturn has an 80. We have an 80 using our maturity evolutionary mark. That's very good considering Saturn, Rahu, Mars, some of these more difficult relation uh, planets, when we have a good evolved and mature relationship with them, 80 is a very good score. Now, when we look at uncomfortable positions in his chart, um, I'd like to take a look at, um, there's a lot of different things going on, but I'd like to take a look at his Jupiter. Now, when you take a look at his Jupiter, it's in the Mercury sign. This is very uncomfortable for Jupiter. So eventually it's uncomfortable in its dignity. It will only gain five points through dignity, plus it's conjunct with K2. So that will not be very positive there. So we only have five points in the Jupiter. Uh, the second factor is the nakshatra position. The Jupiter is in Pornarvasu, which is a Venus. Uh, the Jupiter is in Pornarvasu, which is its own nakshatra. So now Jupiter is in its own nakshatra. So that kind of makes up for the uh, first credential, and he gets the full 20 points from the nakshatra position. So we're looking at 25 points. The third factor is its house position. The 11th house is a neutral place uh, for Jupiter. Um, it's not particularly beneficial or unbeneficial. He's going to get 10 points there. That's 35 points. The fourth factor is he's determined whether he has gone through his Jupiter Mahadasha. And he would is not going through his Jupiter Mahadasha. Uh, he never went through his Jupiter Mahadasha throughout his life. So this could be part of some of the immature relationship with Jupiter. 
and he would be gaining no points there except for the Antar dashes, which will give him five points. So we've determined five points from the first pack factor, 25 points from the second fa uh, 20 points from the second factor. Um, we've gotten another five points uh, from the third factor and 20 and uh, zero points from the fourth factor. So we're looking at a very, very low score of 30 evolutionary points with Steve Jobs Jupiter. Now the fifth factor is to determine any beneficial or detrimental conjunctions. So Jupiter is aspected by Mercury, detrimental conjunction. Not getting any points there, Mr. Jobs. So other things to consider, he was married. Um, Jupiter is not involved in eclipses. He was devoted to a spiritual point to the later point of his life, but not towards the later point of his life when he started to get sick. He was known as a real asshole until then. In terms of treating his, em his employees unfairly, trying to dominate the company, and also um, trying to take creative control on people that he founded his organization with. So unfortunately, we're only looking at a 40% maturity evolution with Steve Jobs Jupiter and its retrograde, which makes his Saturn, which has an 80, look much more beneficial. So I hope all of you have joined this, enjoyed this expose on mature and immature, evolved and immature uh, planets based on the reading in the natal chart. Now you can look at your chart using the credentials provided to discuss your maturity with the planet, to analyze your maturity with the planet. And if your planet is immature, you want a remedy to improve your karma with that planet. If a planet is mature, you just want to keep what you're doing as far as what you're doing with that planet. And uh, yes, I will be doing a little series, I think, coming up on various remedies, uh, just focusing on remedies for the various planets and things like that. So that will be very exciting. Um, we also have an April 19th Mahadasha Summit with Dr. Dharmesh Mesa. Dr. Dharmesh Mehta, Sumili Jani Pawar, Sam Sadasiva Jeppi. So it's a very, very, very exciting collaboration. Uh, Dr. Arjun Pai is joining us. Talk about celebrity astrologers. This is a very exciting event. So please sign up on Zoom or Facebook events page through my Shanati Jyotis uh, page. It's been a pleasure and honor to share this time with you. Stay safe during this time. Uh, may we all pray for each other. May we all pray for the health of each other. And may we all pray for the well-being of each other. Om Namah Shivaya and Hari Om.